I just had an idea. No time to explain it, but okay. So, uh, for starters, skulk sensors can detect when things happen. Whenever I land, whenever I land from any height, uh, it releases a, a signal of five. If I'm moving, it releases a signal of one. If I press this button, it's eleven. And if I open this door, it's a, oh, well, that kind of sucks. Okay, this, you get the idea. Everything uh, has a different uh, signal of uh, strength that uh, can be read by the skulk sensor and uh, displayed by this texture pack I have. So, you may be wondering, what is this for? And if you've read the title, for some reason, I decided it would be good. This is not the right one. Yeah, okay, this isn't the right one. But basically, you could make a combat log, or just an event log, if you get the idea, uh, using these vibrations to get a rough idea of what happens. So, you know, I could run, and we could put that into a system. Hopefully, that can store these signals that it's, that are being put out and shift them down a line. And knowing what we see... Knowing what signals, what signal strengths um, equal what actions, we can get a rough idea of what they, what has happened. And this is the system. Uh, I, I built this a long time ago, but uh, yeah, you, you get that to input into this. And if you make this bigger, you can have a more extensive log that can hopefully be displayed. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to build one, so I'll be right back. So, okay, I found it. I found out who made it. Uh, I just searched it real quick. Uh, Crafty Masterman on YouTube. Go look for him. Uh, it's in his video explaining comparators. Uh, and I'm going to use this system to hopefully draw an input from a skulk sensor and put it into this block, or which I have to put it into here because. Hold on, I gotta. Let me. Okay, page nine. Why not? We just slap our comparator down here, and we just uh, break that. There we go. So now we have a signal strength of nine stored in this memory cell over here. But the cool thing is, you can shift that value over by flicking this lever. The value has now shifted to the next cell. Now this has a signal strength of nine. So now you can store a different signal strength in here. So let's say you want to store a signal strength of 13. So now we have a signal strength of 13 over here and a signal strength of 9. And if we just shift that over, boom, all gets shifted over. Now we have 13 over here and a signal strength of 9 over here. It's a really cool system. So now what if you go below? Okay, you get the idea. Uh, I'm going to thank him for that. And I'm going to save that for whenever I remake it. But yes, uh, basically you just slap a comparator here with um with a power of a you know with a certain with certain information such as the strength coming out of like this lectern for example and later on skulk sensor and we're gonna put that into here like the lever and move it down well i just broke it but yeah you flick the lever and it moves down and gets stored and with this we can store information about what happens the only problem i would see with this is that you would have to manually flick this um unless if we do it automatically whenever something updates so we're gonna have to try that real quick okay after like two seconds of testing and having to fly all over the place to get our redstone lamp this works you could hypothetically get this to update itself the only problem is that you can't update it off of the uh comparator itself so, so if I break, if I break this, and I flip through the pages, the comparator does not update the redstone lamp over there, unfortunately. But if we are to move this to the first redstone wire, and then we do it, it updates. So if we are to do something like this over to let's say here, we'd have to either update it uh, either on here. I think this also updates. Hold on. Okay, we either have to update it from the lectern itself or the skulk sensor itself. 
which would not be optimal or more preferably uh, from here so when it updates it immediately gets stored anyway so this is a slightly modified version of the uh whatever it is i forgot uh by the crafty masterman um it just has an extra cell here and if i go out anymore um it won't be able to reset so unless if i add like a extender but that's besides the point um the thi so the thing is is that you know we can feed in a skulk sensor directly i've just tested it so i can make that and it has that signal there we just need that signal there and we need this to activate in order for it to be sent down and so my first thought was hey why don't we just you know con why don't we just connect this with that so we can detect specifically when this updates and so the problem with that is primarily you get so like i fall down it sends out a five but there's five so if i jump again it doesn't update the system again and it doesn't add that to the log so to get around that what we could do is we could put that was terrible we could put a line of observers to detect the change in the skulk sensor directly which works it works the only problem is that there's going to be five here and then it reactivates so there's now two fives in the system so personally what i would do is i would do this however if this is going to be useful instead of duplicating every single uh you know status update that happens we need to get this to activate only once so whenever it turns on and only on or only off which means we have to put some sort of delay on the skulk sensor detection i don't know th that's kind of weird to explain but still we need to figure out how to make that make one pulse okay i think i figured out how to do that um the first in uh my first thought was to do a t flip flop um which I tested it correctly should mean that oh that's wool and why that anyway so basically uh, we'd take a key flip flop and we'd use it to get a single pulse out of it get a single pulse out of it so this triggers twice although with the weirdness of this I guess um, it only triggers once despite this triggering twice so we're filtering out a we're filtering out a um filtering out one of the detections okay, this is the first test of the system uh you could obviously you could probably improve this um i forgot whether or not pistons instantly retract or uh, detract so you could place this with something much larger uh, especially if this is lower down in the ground you can use like a, a pit you, you could use I, I don't know how to explain it but you, you know you just yeah let me just build it real quick you could use one of these in place of those observers which might be more useful although because this is like right there for testing purposes it doesn't really matter uh, and also that means you could send the signal down a lot faster and without a delay or well with less of a delay so i actually they might do that but so let's do a test of this uh, we've got to clear this out first so i will take a I need to actually add a manual override to this okay uh i just realized that this would probably not be the best idea especially in this scenario so uh we're just gonna throw that to the side and so we got to test this so if i so if everything goes right uh the system should be clear of everything and when we activate this it's going to send out a signal to of, of an equal strength to what we do this uh red that redstone piece there and activate a t flip flop to hopefully only activate this once so Jump the five, 
this across and it's there. So now if I place a block, I'm gonna update and it doubled. Ah, uh, great. Hey, okay. So there should be here. That is, did I mess something up? Hold on, I gotta go back and check. Okay, I figured out why it's probably double triggering. It's because uh, these here release a signal whenever they are activated. They make noise when they're activated. I forgot about that. So if I put that over here. Okay, separate from the button. Sensor. One. They know. They're wrong about that. They're really wrong about that. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. This is totally going well. Oh, the other side. Okay, so Hey, okay, what if I just set this out for me? Okay. Oh, come on. Okay, that was okay, I think I figured it out. Um so it's this updating twice as the item cycles through. As so, yeah, as the item cycles through, uh, I'm gonna have to use that model over there, real quick. Let me see if I can get that to work in a smaller footprint, because I'm onto something. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty certain this thing, this version will work. It looks significantly uglier, but you get the idea. Um, I can clear my inventory real quick. Skulk sensor still needs to go into here though. Yeah, that's the only problem. Is just I have to connect it different. Timing matter. If not, okay. So if I jump here, it gets detected. Did it not send through? Okay, this is an interesting problem. It's not being it's not sending through. Okay, because it's not being it's not being out alright. That's on me, that's on me. Hopefully this works. And we gotta pick up redstone. And if we power it, we can I, at this point, I'm just being stupid. Um, okay. Uh, attempt 4 million at this. Uh, I think I got this to work. Uh, I just removed the end bit there and just made it go directly through the, the T flip flop. So you place a bolt. Oh, you do. Ball. Oh, I guess it counted it as that. Get a 1. Five. Will it store a five? Okay. Sort it. Source of one. Or I think actually. Okay. So it stores twelve. And I break it. And it stores a 13. And then I add a 12 and store the other 13. Okay. Okay, hold on. Oh, this is worse. <laughs> okay. This is take. I don't know what. I hope this works. Grab a block. The way this will hopefully work is that the log is going to update the sleeve. 
It's going to be detected when it goes through. I think a big problem is that it's either it's duplicating them because the signal over here goes through too quickly and it makes another signal or it just doesn't update. I'm not sure about that. I gotta figure that out. So sensor's down. E flip flop. E flip flop is activated. So hopefully, if I land one, okay. What did I do wrong? Oh, uh, okay, that explains it. Okay, explains. It. Okay, that was that's a flunk. That's a flunk on my part. I forgot things can exist with and happen. That oh, okay, pretty good. I think I did. I think I did. Okay, okay. Okay. Detected that. But if I do this, it runs through. Okay, 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 hold on. Okay, status update after another test. Uh, I haven't worked on that, but I'm trying to get there. Um, so, need to get this first this is the thing that's going to tell us what the power level is and we need to get this power line this is the confirmation line the one up there to power second and so with this we have this one going off first or this one good i'm tired of this wall it off forever and we're going to try to build something similar with that. Uh, the T flip flop idea was good. I need to rebuild it. So, put it here. I don't know how this is going to go. Okay. I've made progress, but it's still not perfect. So, this <laughs> looks so stupid. This is just a reset lever. Anyway, so, uh, the thing is that when it comes to the activation, uh, when it comes to the activation line, uh, it doesn't really need a specific power level to go through, so we only have to worry about this specifically. So we need to put uh, this one skulk sensor really close to the system so that it could load in the value, and then whenever we, we have to put a delay in here so it can actually flow. I'm experimenting with the delay just to see how that works because sometimes and well let me actually clear this out real quick okay so sometimes like let's say that's a five and it triggers and puts it in right so now there's two fives in the system when i break this block it just updates to a 13. and then whenever i put down a block again there's a 13 and a 12. So, like, it didn't duplicate that time, but uh, if I break this, there's now multiple 13s. So I need to figure out how to get rid of the duping. This is... I don't know why I called this a concept when I'm making it myself. Oh, whatever. Okay. At this point, like, I don't know what to do. But I feel like I've explained the concept enough for, other, for smarter people to do it. Um, I think it's mostly just a matter of timing the skulk sensor with uh, the chargeback. Like the confirmation loop here. So that I can actually move down. Um, it's a big issue. Uh, the reset lever. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I, I th I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure that it has to do with just sending it off in the first place because, like, it has to display here, here, and here. And I'm trying to get it to display here later so that the old information, which is usually stuck on this block, gets sent over 
that can be displayed here. I think it's just a matter of adding more of these and shortening the timer on this. But I, I, I think that's it. Maybe I'll give it, you know, I'll give it a shot real quick and I'll come back. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm stuck. Uh, but hopefully the idea has been, hopefully the idea is actually out there now. Uh, this is, the, it's, this is just the idea, the concept. Uh, not, nothing special. Um, but yeah, hopefully someone smarter than me can do this, because I can't figure it out. Uh, before I do anything up, I do want to say, again, concept for activity log. Displaying this information is one, like, getting the information is one thing, and then displaying it's another, which you'd probably do with uh, redstone lights. Uh, which is going to be relatively inconvenient, unless if there's like another way that I don't know how to do. Uh, so another problem I noticed is that you make a noise, like falling, for example, or well, you know, just walking in that case, you get a one, you place a block, that one just gets dissolved. So, get, so that that's an issue. I've seen testing is that like if the number is higher if like the, if the number is higher than the previous one being recorded then it might get deleted which sucks and also these two typically duplicate themselves I don't know what to do uh please help uh I'm not going to use it but the idea is out there hopefully and once again I want to thank crafty masterman for come for not I don't think they created this circuit, but uh they demonstrated it and it's in their it's in his it it's it's in his YouTube video uh where he explains comparators and all that so I'll link it in the description or whatever and yeah this is a failure. But that's what the redstone testing world is for, so you don't move off, you know, in survival. Or in an SMP, which this would actually be pretty useful in an SMP. Uh, I don't know exactly how, but, you know, if, like, if, if you have a hallway and someone is, like, like, you know, you're in a hallway, for example, you can tell when someone is... Theoretically, if you make this big enough, you could just look in, like, this little circuit where everything's being recorded. Look in and see, like, when people are walking, when people are jumping, or, you know, taking a potion. Right, like, that's the idea, is that you can detect when stuff happens. The only- and... The only problem is just the quirkiness with this for me at this point. I can't figure it out. I've said it a million times already. But uh, you could, you you'll know when things are happening. And with one point twenty with amethyst resonance, ameth, I guess. With uh, with amethyst resonance, you'd be able to just connect these from here to here, so you don't have to necessarily place this entire circuit next to a wall. You'd be able to spread it out much further, and you know, get it to resonate back to control hub or something. You get the idea, right? I hope I made this clear because this is just a concept. And I actually really like it. The problem is, is that it's very quirky, and I can't think hard enough for, to finish this. So this will forever stay part of my redstone testing world. And I want to thank you for watching. And I want to again shout out that dude that displayed this in his YouTube video, Rocky Masterman. He has 100,000 subscribers. He makes interesting videos. And uh, yeah, that's it. Bye.